Ever wonder what's hidden in the secret vault at the Lego Idea House? How Celine Dion's most famous song almost never happened? How a vice president technically got kidnapped at Disneyland? Or how the original Star Wars script was supposed to be? Well, you're in luck. Because here's 10 interesting facts that will blow your mind. In 1959, Walt Disney invited then-Vice President Richard Nixon and his family to Disneyland to attend the dedication ceremony for the park's new monorail. The monorail's air conditioning only worked when the train was in motion. On the day the Nixon family arrived to tour the monorail, it was reportedly very hot, so Disney invited them onto the air-conditioned car, and the train took off with the family on board. The issue? Nixon's secret service was left on the platform as the train left, essentially kidnapping the Vice President and his family. After the train completed the first lap, it appeared to slow down to let the Secret Service members on. Instead, Nixon's daughters allegedly yelled, again, and the train went for a second lap without the Secret Service agents on board. Bob Gurr, the Disney employee in charge of the whole debacle, said that Nixon reportedly roared with laughter. The monorail eventually stopped, allowing the Nixon family to reunite with their Secret Service agents. It was later revealed that Disney executives were actually a bit worried about the Nixon family's joyride. The monorail had only taken one success successful lap prior before the Nixon family's trip. According to Gurr, there were some concerns that the train might catch on fire with the entire Nixon family on board. The rhyme Rockabye Baby might have a pretty dark origin. Some believe that the lullaby was written about the son of King James II of England and Mary of Modena, who allegedly was not actually the couple's biological son. Instead, many think that a random child was brought into the birthing suite and passed off as theirs, in order to ensure there would be a Roman Catholic heir to the throne. On December 8, 1963, Barry Keenan and Joe Amsler, former high school classmates from Los Angeles, kidnapped Frank Sinatra Jr. in order to demand a hefty ransom from his famous father. Keenan and Amsler had reportedly been tailing Sinatra for weeks in order to determine when would be the best time to strike. Sinatra had been trying to get his own musical career started, and was performing at Harris Club Lodge in Lake Tahoe on the night of the abduction. After the performance, Sinatra was resting in his dressing room with a friend when Keenan knocked on the door and pretended to be delivering a package. They tied up the friend while they blindfolded Sinatra and led him out of the room at gunpoint to a waiting car. The friend was able to free himself and contacted authorities, who quickly sprung into action and set up roadblocks to try to catch the kidnappers. According to the FBI report from the kidnapping, the kidnapping were actually stopped, but ended up bluffing their way through the roadblocks and continued on to a hideout in Los Angeles. Less than an hour after the crime, the FBI contacted Sinatra's parents. They believed that the motive for the kidnapping was money, and advised the Sinatras to pay the ransom request so they could trace the money. Keenan, Amsler, and a third conspirator, John Irwin, ultimately ended up demanding $240,000 in ransom. The Sinatras gave the FBI the money, who followed the instructions given by the kidnappers and dropped the money between two school buses in Sepulveda, California on December 11th. While Keenan and Amsler were en route to pick up the money, Irwin got nervous and ended up freeing Sinatra Jr., who walked several miles until he found a security guard who could help him. The guard put Sinatra Jr. in the trunk of his car to avoid drawing attention and took him home. While he didn't know much about his kidnappers, he was able to give authorities enough information to lead them to the house. All three men involved were quickly captured, and nearly all of the ransom was recovered. During the trial, the defense attempted to argue that Sinatra Jr. actually orchestrated his own kidnapping as a publicity stunt, but a confession letter written by Keenan was eventually found. All three men were convicted. Keenan and Amsler were both sentenced to life in prison plus 75 years, while Irwin was given 75 years. Their sentences were later reduced to just 25 years. Amsler and Irwin both served three and a half years, while Keenan ended up serving four and a half. Upon Keenan's release, he entered the real estate world and became a millionaire. In 1998, he decided to sell his story for publication, and soon after, Columbia Pictures approached him and his co-conspirators, offering them millions to make a movie about the experience. After Sinatra Jr. caught wind of this, he filed a lawsuit citing a California law stating that felons could not profit off of their crimes. Keenan shot back, saying that the lawsuit violated his First Amendment rights. After a long legal battle, Sinatra Jr. won the case. Although Barbie and Ken might be one of the world's most popular fictional couples, they're low-key kind of siblings. Mattel founder Ruth Handler decided to name the dolls after her children, Barbara and Kenneth, which means that the couple was inspired by a real-life brother and sister duo. 
Who would have thought? Celine Dion initially resisted recording My Heart Will Go On for Titanic, as director James Cameron opposed the idea of ending the film with a pop song, comparing it to putting a song at the end of Schindler's List. Composer James Horner, already working on the film's score, believed in Dion's ability and convinced her to do a demo. Despite skepticism, Dion's husband, the late Ren Ang Lil, persuaded her to record it. In a single take, she delivered a powerful performance, leaving everyone in tears. James Cameron didn't want a song in his movie, Dion said. My movie is big enough. I don't need something bigger. I don't need any singer. But despite Cameron's initial reluctance, he acknowledged the song's effectiveness in the film. My Heart Will Go On went on to become one of the best-selling singles, winning an Oscar and a Grammy. Dion credits her husband's foresight for the pivotal decision, expressing gratitude for the impact on her career. Let's take a short break. I have a riddle for you. There are 30 cows in a field, and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Post your answer in the comments. Now back to more interesting facts. A walrus's tusk size determines their social status. The longer the tusk, the more respected the walrus is. Both male and female walruses grow tusks that can measure up to 3 feet long. Yikes! If the tusks break, however, it often means that their social status gets knocked down a few pegs. In addition to his role as the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln was a formidable wrestler. With a reputed record of only one defeat over a span of more than a decade, Lincoln began wrestling in his childhood and continued to engage in matches for years. At 19, he used his wrestling skills to defend his stepbrother's river barge from hijackers. In 1830, while working as a shopkeeper in New Salem, Illinois, he defeated the town's wrestling champion, Jack Armstrong, who was allegedly fighting dirty, so Lincoln reportedly picked him up and knocked him out to end the fight. Lincoln's prowess in wrestling earned him a place in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in Oklahoma in 1992, showcasing his resilience in the face of life's challenges. While you definitely know about NASA's achievements in space, they've also developed quite a few items that you probably have in your home. Among NASA's non-space-related inventions are the dust buster, scratch-resistant eyeglass lenses, athletic cooling fabrics, memory foam, and even elements of the modern laptop, including fan-based cooling and a full-size keyboard. I guess they still care about what's on Earth as much as what's outside Earth. Deep within the Lego Idea House, beneath a secret door and down a flight of stairs, lies a hidden treasure, a vault containing over 8,000 Lego sets dating back to the 1960s. Marked engineering, this mysterious chamber is part of Lego's corporate museum, inaccessible to the public. However, a virtual version at Lego House offers a mesmerizing experience, allowing enthusiasts to explore 3D photos of every Lego set ever sold, organized by release year. The real vault serves a strictly business purpose, open only to those with relevant reasons, such as research research, inspiration, or photography projects. The sets, meticulously organized by release year, remain securely within the vault. LEGO's corporate historian, Christian Reimer Hodge, recommends visitors select the year of their birth and add five years to discover sets from their childhood. A surreal and nostalgic journey, this LEGO archive is just one of several secret rooms housing the company's rich history. Beyond the fascination for fans, the brilliance lies in LEGO's commitment to preserving every set ever made, showcasing a dedication to its legacy and the art of creativity. During the development of the original Star Wars trilogy, George Lucas envisioned an intriguing backstory. An ancient race of immortal beings called the Wills, who recorded galactic stories. Lucas planned for the Wills to entrust these tales to chroniclers known as Keepers, with R2-D2 potentially being one of them. He even imagined himself as a Keeper, bridging the Star Wars universe with reality. Although the Wills didn't make it into the films, Lucas salvaged the concept, incorporating it into extensive notes. The Journal of the Wills inspired the movie's opening sequences, offering recaps from the perspective of these cosmic chroniclers. The Wills eventually made their official debut in Rogue One, adding a layer of mystique to the epic Star Wars saga. I hope you found these interesting and even learned something new. The answer to the riddle is in the pinned comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more interesting facts.